Hello and welcome to the Linux command line video series. In this video, we will look at mounting drive images in the RAW format or EWF format using the tools Xmount and KpartX. Please help me out by hitting the subscribe button so I can cut foot loose. In a different video, we learned how to mount image files in the DD or E01 formats using the EWF command and then mount using loops. Now let's take a look at two different commands, xmount and kpartx, to mount images. xmount is basically a tool to convert a hard disk image to another disk image format, which is represented by a virtual file system. xmount takes as input any DD file, any EWF or export witness format files, otherwise known as E01 files, and then AFF or advanced forensic format files. And for output, xmount can produce a DD file, a DMG file, which is the Apple disk image, a VDI file, which is the VirtualBox format files, a VHD file, which is the Microsoft virtual hard disk image format, or a VMDK, which is the VMware format. Xmount also supports writes to files on the virtual file system via a redirect to a cache file. So this way, any changes that you made are cached and not affecting the uh, evidence E01. For the demos in this video, I'm going to be using the CFREDS 2015 data leakage E01 image. And so if you want to follow along, the link to download the data set is in the description below. Step one, just like regular mounting, we need to have mount points for the virtual DD image to reside in. So we're gonna make new directories for that. Okay, so we also need to create new mount points for the partitions from that E01 image. And we can name them whatever you want and place them wherever you want, but to be consistent, I like to put them in the slash MNT folder, and that's where I recommend you do the same. So the first command I'm gonna do is sudo make dir slash mnt slash open curly bracket x mount comma p1 comma p2 n curly bracket and so this is essentially these curly brackets basically tell the command line to uh, substitute each one of those arguments in there separately so essentially this is telling the system to create a mnt x mount mnt p1 and mnt p2 folder so we can verify that by doing ls on slash mnt and here we see we have the xmount p1 and p2 folders created then what we want to do is use xmount to convert the e01 right the ewf formatted file into a vmdk formatted file and so once again the vmdk is the vmware's virtual disk format we could just convert this into a dd file but essentially we're getting a vmdk file for free right by by specifying the output this way if we want to boot this particular image in a vm we already have the proper files we need so for the xmount command we can do sudo xmount dash dash in ewf pc dot e question mark question mark so this specifies the input format as a EWF format, and then we tell it the files that we want to read in. Dash dash out VMDK. So this tells the program the output format we want it to, to generate is the VMDK format. And then dash dash cache, pc.cache. This tells Xmount that it, we want it to create a cache file called pc.cache in the current folder. And lastly, the mount point we want to specify is slash mnt slash xmount. For the input, we need to specify all of the segments of the image set. So one thing you can do is type out each of the full names of the segments, like pc.e01, pc.e02, pc.e03, etc. Or here what we're going to do is use the wildcards of question mark, question mark, to match any E01, E02, E03, etc. files. And one thing I did on purpose is I did not specify E star, right, with the wildcard, because if you do that, it may also match the text file that some tools create, right? Some tools like FTK Imager will create a E01.txt file 
that has essentially the imaging log. So you got to be careful with the wildcards, which things you match. So one thing you can do is you can just do ls and then pc.e question mark question mark take a look at what comes up or else you can do ls pc.e star and see what comes up. And for the output I specified vmdk right because that gives us a free D vmdk file and lastly I specify the cache file so that any changes we make to the mounted image will only get changed to the cache file and not the evidence image. And after the mount succeeds, I'm going to cd into the mount point and take a look at what's inside. So I'm going to cd into slash mnt slash xmount and then do an ls minus lh and looking at the results of the xmount in the folder we can see that there are three files. A dd image which is going to be the same size as the actual hard drive. An info file, which is the file that contains all the metadata about that image. And then lastly, the VMDK file, which we specified. And then the VMDK file can be used to create a virtual machine from the DD image. Let's take a look at the image file to see the number of partitions it contains and the file system on each partition. So we can do disk type of pc.dd. Here we can see that this image is using the DOS MBR partitioning scheme and contains two partitions. Partition 1 starts at sector offset 2048 and contains a NTFS file system. And the second partition starts at sector offset 206848 and also contains an NTFS file system. Note that the two values highlighted are the sector offsets to the respective partitions, not the byte offsets. And we will use this shortly. All right, step two. At this point, because we have a virtualized DD file, I can use the regular mount command to mount that virtual DD. I just have to use the uh, disk type command to see where the offsets are for each partition and then involve some math to deal with the offset calculations. Right, so we can do sudo mount dash t ntfs dash o ro for read only comma loop for creating a loop comma offset equals dollar open parentheses parentheses two zero six eight four eight times five twelve end parentheses end parentheses pc dot dd and then the mount point of slash mnt slash p2. So reading the command, we're using mount, and then we're telling it to mount a NTFS partition. We're going to give it some options. The first one is RO for read only. The second one is loop to have it create a loop. And then lastly, we're going to tell it the offset into the image where we're going to start reading. And we're going to tell the shell to do some math. Right? That's what the dollar parentheses uh, is about. We're going to give it the offset for the second partition, right? That's the 206848. And because that's a partition, we need to multiply by 512 bytes to get the byte offset. And then the next argument is the evidence itself, pc.dd. And once we do that, we can do an ls of slash mnt slash p2. And we can see that this is actually the file system of that second partition. So after we take a look at everything that's in there, we can go ahead and unmount it, right, to, to get out. So we can do sudo umount slash mnt slash p2 to unmount it. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. But like I said, it involves some math that you have to do in figuring out where the partition offset is. And so this is where k part x comes in handy. Using k part x will create the loop devices for each of the partitions so they can be mounted. We don't actually need to do any of the calculations ourselves. I'm going to do sudo k part x dash a v pc dot dd. Uh, with k part x, there is a dash a option that specifies adding partitions, and then a v option for specifying the verbose mode so that the command gives you feedback as to what it's doing. Here you can see that k part x sees the two partitions of the dd file and then figures out the partition offsets and then create the loops for you. 
the created loops devices are then put into a special folder called slash dev slash mapper. And Kpart X will magically know what is the next available loop in your system that it can use. And so your loop number may be different than the one I'm using, right? So make sure when you're typing this yourself, you are looking at your loop numbers, not copying mine. So what we're going to do is sudo mount dash o r o slash dev slash mapper slash loop one p one slash mnt slash p one. So what we're going to do is essentially mount that special device in loop one p one to the mount point of slash mnt p one. And then let's go ahead and up arrow and substitutes the P1s for the P2. So we're going to do the same thing for the second partition. So now partition 1 and partition 2 of the E01 image are mounted onto the mount points slash MNT P1 and slash MNT P2 respectively. We can change directory into MNT P1 and P2 to take a look at the files to prove that this process actually worked. Let's just go, go ahead and do an LS of MNT P1. So we see all the files that are in that particular directory. And then what we can do is do a DF for drive free space. We can do DF dash H for human readable of MNT P1. And we can see the drive space that is being used and the drive space that is still free. Let's go ahead and take a look at a different file. We're going to do an uh, LS dash LH of slash MNT slash P2 slash users slash informant slash nt user dot dat right so we can definitely see on this particular image that particular registry file so we know that we can actually see into the image and lastly we can also take a look at the drive space usage on this second partition by doing df dash h slash mnt p2 and we see the amount that's used, the amount that's available. So that could be useful for you. And when you're done looking at the images, make sure you clean up by reversing the steps taken above. So we're going to go ahead and CD into slash MNT slash X mount. And then we're going to do sudo U mount of slash MNT slash P2 to mount the second partition. Sudo U mount slash MNT P1 to mount the first partition. And then we're going to use kpart x to delete the loop devices by using the dash d for delete option. sudo kpart x dash dv pc dot dd. And the output is going to confirm to us that the loops were deleted. And then we're going to cd out of that x mount folder because we need to remove the virtualized dd image by amounting that directory that it was created in. So we cd out of there. And then sudo umount slash mnt slash xmount. And then one thing to notice about the xmount command is that it creates the dd representation of the evidence image in pretty much no time at all. And it also took no drive space as everything is in the virtual file system. So this can be very useful if you need to convert your images from one format to another because some spools may only take certain formats either the raw format or the easier one format. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video where we learned about advanced mounting commands. We use the xmount and kpartx commands to mount a raw format image. We use the xmount command to convert a EWF image to a virtual DD image. Then we use the kpartx command to set up loops automatically. Hope you enjoyed it, and if so, click on the thumbs up icon to like this video. Please hit the subscribe button to get notified when the next video comes out. Also, please leave me messages in the comment section below so I know what you liked and didn't like, or what you may want to see in future videos. See you next time.